appointed by the 7th Judicial State Attorney, Mr. R.J. Larizza. We're here today to give you an update uh, following the uh, horrific murders of Robert and Tayton Baker, which occurred on Wednesday morning. I'm grateful uh, that there was uh, an arrest of a suspect and that this case was brought to such a successful and quick resolution within 48 hours of its occurrence. Today, we're grieving along with the family, and I know that while there's no closure for them because of their loss, we intend to bring justice for Robert and for Tayton. Last night, detectives, deputies, and investigators from the 7th Judicial Circuit State Attorney's Office arrested Robert, I'm sorry, Mark Wilson Jr., a 30-year-old male, who is charged with two counts of first-degree premeditated murder in this case. I can tell you that Mr. Wilson has an extensive criminal history involving drugs, property crimes, and no prior violence. Just to give you a little background, Wilson and his family uh, are from the Interlochen area. He was living in the, uh, on the property with his, uh, with his girlfriend. The, uh, the parents of Robert and Tayden had actually just moved to Putnam County 16 days ago today, uh, coming from Polk County. They were trying to be supportive of family members and invited her sister and Robert to live with them in a shed on their property. The Baker family did a lot to help these two individuals and their family, and unfortunately, it ended in the brutal death of Robert and Tayton. So we received the call originally Wednesday at about 10.38 a.m. Our deputies arrived on scene at about 10.50 that morning, at which time they found Robert and Tayton both deceased inside the residence. Detectives quickly determined that this was an isolated incident and that there was no danger to any members of the community. Over the next 48 hours, our deputies, detectives, and state attorney's office investigators worked tirelessly and diligently to identify a suspect, and following that, uh, were able to actually recover the, uh, the two weapons used in the murder, one of which was a hammer and the other was a knife. Yesterday afternoon uh, and late last night, positive ID was made on the suspect, Mr. Wilson, who was uh, quickly apprehended and brought into the sheriff's office for questioning and following an interview was subsequently arrested. I will say that we've recovered a significant amount of evidence and while we've made an arrest, there's still a significant amount of work to do in this case. Uh, it's evolving as we speak and we have still many unanswered questions and a multitude of work to do. The arrest last night is merely the first step in this case to bringing justice for Robert and Tayton. And with that, I'll give uh, Mr. Larissa an opportunity to, uh, to share some thoughts. Thank you, Chair. RJ. Good morning, folks. I'd like to first say how much I appreciate the Putnam County Sheriff's Office and the partnership we had. This case is an example of how two horrific murders can be solved within a 48-hour period by working together. When you have a murder with the level of violence that we had in, in these particular cases, it's disturbing not just to law enforcement and prosecutors, but the community as a whole. And I want to applaud our investigators, our prosecutors, all of the folks at the Putnam County Sheriff's Office for bringing the, this arrest home in such a short period of time. The community is safer because of it. I can tell you, I've been in the criminal justice system working since 1980, and these are some of the most brutal murders that I've ever heard about. I can tell you that the defendant, he attacked these kids without mercy. And you know, we talk about justice. That word comes out a lot. A lot of people use it, but I'm not sure that they really know what justice is. But I can tell you what justice is in this case. Justice is holding the defendant and anyone else that might have aided or assisted responsible. 
for what he and what they may have done. And that's what the state attorney's office intends to do. Thank you. That's unclear. Like I said earlier, this, uh, this case is still very active and is evolving as we speak. Uh, we hope to glean some additional information through some subsequent interviews over the next uh, few days and hope that will shed some light on that, uh, that particular subject for us. Brittany Muller with Channel 4 WJXT. Has Wilson made any admissions um, into what may have led to this and how did you find him last night during your investigation? He was actually arrested uh, last night in the Interlochen area uh, through some uh, very keen uh, detective work. Uh, and as far as, uh, I'm sorry, what was the first part of your question again? Has he made any admissions? Uh, I will say that uh, he was interviewed last night and subsequently arrested. Sir, you made some very strong comments on your Facebook page about this arrest. I know you said that you hoped the death penalty would be pursued. I guess my question is for the district attorney, is that something you guys are we will certainly review all the facts and circumstances. It's certain, this is a case worthy of consideration of the death penalty. But we need to talk to the family. We need to review the evidence. We need to get our executive team together. Then we will give a thorough, re thorough review of all the facts and circumstances and the law as it applies. But I can tell you, it will be considered. I'll tell you, you know, as a, as a father of uh, three children of my own, I, I just, I can't imagine the anguish that, uh, that this poor family is, is going through now. And, you know, given the circumstances, they, they moved here from uh, Polk County where they had uh, presumably a good life, uh, moved up here to be closer to some of their family and were doing their level best, like I said, to, uh, to help out Robert and his girlfriend. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's such a tragedy when anyone loses their life, uh, but especially uh, two very bright young men like Robert and, and Tayton were, and it's, it's, it's just absolutely horrifying to me as a parent that uh, these two young men lost their life uh, prematurely and that their parents are having to endure this. Are y'all sworn charges for anyone else at this point? So I will say that uh, Throughout the investigation, uh, there has been uh, some indication there may be some other involvement with some other parties. Uh, that's not become uh, immediately apparent to us yet, uh, but we're, we're certainly uh, exploring all of those avenues and we'll leave no stone unturned. Would that be the boy's aunt? What's that? Would that be the boy's aunt or the other person who's living on the property with Mr. Wilson? I think it would be premature for me to, uh, to name anyone else as a, as a suspect or person of interest, but uh, it's our belief that uh, um, Mr. Wilson was the, uh, the uh, sole attacker responsible for these two murders. And we saw that Wilson's address is listed as Newberry on the jail records website. Um, when he came here, is there any indication of um, what was that relationship between the sister, the family, do you have any information on the relationship between the boys? I don't, I don't have a lot of information on the family, family dynamics right now. We're trying to give uh, the parents some time to, uh, you know, to, to grieve the loss of their children, and, but we'll, we'll engage with them at, uh, you know, at some point and see if we can, we can dig a little deeper into the family dynamics. That's probably a question uh, more appropriate for Mr. Larizza. The way the process works now, he's been arrested. Of course, we all know that COVID-19 has affected to some extent how we process criminal cases. We don't have, gr grand juries have not been convened. They've been, they have been suspended, but so have the speedy trial rules and other rules of procedure. So we will move for an indictment as soon as we can, as soon as we're able to get the grand jury convened and bring them in. Additionally, after that, then after, the, after he is charged with first degree murder by indictment, then that'll start the, the criminal process in bringing them into court. And uh, the strong consideration and review for the death penalty will, will, will be ongoing during that time period. Has Wilson went in front of a judge today? Has he had his first appearance? 
So first appearance generally has occurred by, uh, by this time of day. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have any feedback from our correction staff as to, uh, to how that went or, or what transpired in first appearance. If not, it will be today. And is that open for the public? How does that work because of coronavirus? And so first appearance is done by uh, closed circuit television system. Um, and there's, a, there's a, essentially a video link. It operates um, not unlike a, a Zoom environment, but, but somewhat different. Okay, thank you all very much.